Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning here. And just I just learned that you are in the same process that we are in the Finland to redesign our curriculum for the 21st century. But let's first have a small glance for the history. This is by the way me. They're starting my school year my school career, 1966. And those days, we had a big debate in Finland going on about renewing our education system. The current system, uh, we had four years of elementary education, and after that, you went either to private grammar school or public grammar school, or in the, in a way, worst case, you went to so-called folk school. And the new idea was having all comprehensive school for all kids, irrespective of their background, sitting in the same classroom, taught by the same teacher from the first grade up to the ninth one. So it was quite a radical uh, revolution, re renewal of our education, and there were quite many who were resisting that. They were afraid especially the parents of the grammar school children, the private grammar school children, they were thinking, what will happen to our grammar sons and daughters if they have to sit in the same classroom, taught by the same teacher with all these other learners? And also teachers, they were terrified, some of them. But actually, what happened and what was the idea behind this renewal? There were those behind this uh, uh, reform, they had a deep understanding of the role of the school in society to promote social cohesion and well-being of all citizens. And in practice that meant to give equal opportunities to each and everyone to reach their potential irrespective of their background or their parents' ability to support their education. And not only for the individuals, but also for the society, for Finland. They understood that for Finland to be successful in the future, we can't lose any potential, what we are having amongst our children. So, Finland, we did that. And Finland became a model country for education. We succeeded. There was a lot of work to be done, uh, to be honest. But in the end, we succeeded. And our kids, our children, they have been on the top of uh, international evaluation, like PISA evaluation, year after year. And what is most important, the learning gap in, in between the weak performing and the well performing is the smallest amongst the OEC countries. So you may be thinking, why in Finland, why we are in the need of uh, rewriting our narrative for education, not just do some correction, but rewriting it. Let me tell you why. The current school, the traditional school, it was built for the need of industrial era, a time of mass production, spe very specific professions, very stable labor market. You qualified for one profession and you retired from that one. So those times, obediency, doing things together at the same time, at the same rate, concentrate only on your own thing, not disturbing the other one, they were quite relevant competencies for the needs of uh, industrial factories to push the button at the right time. But that world does not exist anymore. And moreover, if we are thinking of school, the task of the school to provide our kids with the competencies needed for the future. So just imagine, is someone having a kid that is just starting a, uh, their career as a school, the first grader, or the neighbor's child? Just think of that child. See, or he will be active player in the labor market 2070, and we don't know even what kind of professions we are going to have then. What are the competencies really? What do they need to know? If we're thinking of the world, 
digitalization, the globalization, it, it's changing our world. Our world is more complex, more uh, unpredictable, more multicultural than ever. Just think digitalization, how it has already changed the ways of procedures, our communication, how automation and robotics can e have easily replaced the human labor. And if we are thinking in future, even the expert, the routine expert jobs can be replaced by robots and automation. Maybe in the future, it's not me having this lecture or this talk to you, but the robot that looks and sounds like me. By the way, are you really sure that it's me and not my artificial me? <laughs> Where you know it? Okay, I can assure you that it's real me. But you never know. The technology already uh, exists. And if we are thinking another thing that digitalization has changed, information, the concept of information. In school, the teacher, in the traditional school, the teacher used to be the holy grail, having the holy grail of wisdom or the gatekeeper for the information. But how is it today? Information, it's spread everywhere. Anyone can access it. Any, anyone can modify it. And so on and so on. So I have noticed that there is a big gap in between how the school is functioning and the real life. Just have a look at these pictures. 1800s, school, 1940, 1966, me again there. And today, we can't see a lot of difference, can we? The setting has remained almost unchanged, I'm afraid. And I'm afraid not only the setting has remained unchanged, but it's telling us something more profound. We are repeating the traditional ways of teaching and learning, not preparing our kids for the future. May I ask you a question? Would you go to a doctor that is using a technology for the last century, or a dentist that's still having a dental drill from early 1900s? I wouldn't. But at the same time, we are quite content to let our kids to attend an education system that was designed for the past era. So the critical question is, what is then school for? What are the main or the key competencies needed for the future? I don't have time to go through everything, but some three clusters. And one is, I think, the most important thing that we should concentrate in, in the school is collaboration and social skill. To equip our children with the capacity to work together, to solve problems together, to, uh, to build knowledge together. And not only these academic skills, but also to concentrate in the social skills. The ability to, to be raised up to, and to, to, to be grow up, to be responsible citizens of the future society. People who feel concern for others, not only seeking their own benefits and their own good. I believe that for the future, any nation to be successful, we need strong communities. We need communities that are taking care of all their citizens. And that's why we should concentrate on collaboration and social skills at school. The other cluster is critical thinking and so-called new literacy. As I already mentioned, information is everywhere, spread everywhere. So we have no need to teach our children to repeat some things from the book or to memorize by heart a hollow contents of different subjects. Instead, we should teach them critical thinking to be able to evaluate the information they are they are overwhelmed from the nets and other resources of information. And then the third cluster is creativity. I'm afraid that our traditional school, it's preparing our kids to avoid mistakes, to try to guess what the teacher is telling, to try to guess the only right answer that teacher is having in her or his mind. And that's not what we need for the future. We need young people, old people who are creative, innovative. They have courage to try new things. They, have, they are bold to do 
to do even mistakes and learn from their mistakes. They have flexible mind. They, ha they are resilient in the in the chains, and they they can combine things. They can solve problems of the wicked wicked problems of the global world. And there you need not to know one single things, but to, uh, the ability kind of across disciplinary thinking where you can combine information for different sources. That's what we need for the school. And moreover, my question is, how does our children learn today? How many of you have small children or grandchildren? Please, can you raise your hand? And they are very comfortable with all these devices, aren't they? More comfortable than me. My sister, I, unfortunately, I'm not a grandmother, but my sister is, so I'm very proud grand auntie. And there's this little girl called, called Alina. She, she was only one year and some months, and she was a bit shy, so I want to break the ice, and I saw her a picture of a giraffe that I have in my mobile. And guess what this little girl did? With her little tiny fingers, she just exactly knew the right caster to enlarge the picture. And she even knew how to shift to the other one. And no one has taught that to her to do that. She just naturally have, had learned these abilities. And what happens in our schools in Finland? Our kids, and especially the boys, they are more skilled in English than ever before. And what they have done? Studied hard? No. They have played games like Angry Birds and other very exciting claim, plays and games online in English, and they have learned new skills. My, my, my question is that, should the learning be difficult and hard work, or ca can it be funny and inspiring, fun learning, where, where our children are motivated to, to gain new skills, and that's my vision for the future school. And actually, all what this and even more, what I have already said, has made us in Finland to rethink our education, to rethink our narrative for our education. Uh, education that is promoting the skills needed for the future. And in that future school, our focus in, is in meaningful learning and promoting the 21st century skills, holistic skills and competencies, instead of uh, repeating some isolated contents from different subjects. And very important to promote the participation and active role of the learner. The learner must be in the center, and the ownership of the learning process must be teach, uh, the pupils, not the teachers, as it used to be. And as I al almost said, teachers. And what I already said, strengthen the social skills and the ability of collaboration. That's, for me, one of the most important things for the future school. But at the same time, when we are concentrating for the settings that enable uh, pupils to collaborate together, to build up uh, knowledge together, so we also have to take care of the possibility for each and individual learner to have their individualized learning paths together with their mates, not alone, but together. And learning, it must be meaningful, as I said in the beginning. And it to be so, it has to be anchored to a real life, to a real life phenomenon. Certainly, definitely, this will change the role of the teacher. From they have to collaborate instead of doing things alone. Coaching and scaffolding the learning process instead of teaching isolated contents, as I already meant. They have to focus more in planning the learning environment and guiding the learning process instead of uh, teaching by the book. And evaluation. In Finland, we don't believe in testing, so I must confess this in the first place. But I, what I would say about evaluation is that instead of concentrating the end results and what is the level, we should put our energy in guiding the learning process itself, the evaluating the learning process instead of the... We, we shouldn't be that, that concerned about the, the end product. But this all it needs is requires a holistic 
uh, approach of chains. It's, it's not a trick. You just can't clip your fingers and, and make it happen. And what we have found in Finland is that we have to invest on leadership, the quality of the leadership. And we have to change the school culture, the pedagogical implementation. It's not enough that you are replacing the books with the, with the tablets. That, do, that, that doesn't change anything. We have to change the practices first. And then, of course, we have to think of the learning environment and understand that learning is not captured inside the school building. Learning happens everywhere, and all the places are learning places. And some Practical examples, two very, two very small examples, what, how we have then implemented these principles. We have big dreams and visions, but to be practical, we have encouraged our teachers to do small experiments, small practical experiments, try to do things in a different way, at least for one day or one week, and encourage them not to be afraid of making mistakes and, and failing. It's not dangerous. We can learn from our failures. For, for, and, and also we have encouraged those teachers that are advanced. There are teachers that are more advanced and, than the others to, to really to model their teaching practices and, and, and to give them space to, uh, to peer to, to guide and coach their peers, their te teacher mates. And that has been very um, successful way of changing the learning practices. We have also had a very big question, how to break the traditional ways of, of teaching and, and learning in, in school. And one answer to that, uh, or one, one solution to that, is so-called phenomena-based education or, or learning. We have asked ourselves, the life is not split into subjects, so why should learning? Why are we so concentrating on teaching different subjects? And we are flipping the classroom. We, our, our pupils, everyone, uh, after a year, every pupil, at least twice a year, they will have this kind of long-term uh, entities where they are tackling the real-life phenomena. Uh, related to real life, they are, authentic, they are using authentic learning environments and methods. And that we know it will promote meaningful learning, learning that the children really understand why and how and, and for what reason they are learning these things. And the role of the pupil is very active for, for, from the planning process, of course, doing and then evaluating. Here is one example of a phenomena that the pupils were suggesting what they'd like to study. And you can see, I have don't, no time to go in more detail, but you can see that it's covering many traditional subjects. But for the pupils, it's a holistic entity. They, they know where they need uh, mobile fines, and then they can study different things. And I'm sure that these kids, when they started to study the phenomena called smartphone, they will have lessons that they won't forget. So, for the future, for the future of the school, I have a dream, we have a dream, that in Finland to become a country where everyone is loving to learn. A country where this small kid, when she, after some years, enters the school, like I did 40 years ago, sees excited, thrilled to learn. Learning is fun to her. It makes sense. It, 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 she understands why she's learning things. And she's experiencing very exciting learning places. places utilizing, we are utilizing the multiple learning places that we are having in our surrounding. So this is my dream. This is our dream for the future sc school. And my question is, Will, do you want to be part of that dream? Thank you. Mm -hmm.